All right, so welcome to Mamoli Lexington part two. My name's Rich, this is my channel, or Max Models. And, well, I know, I filmed this intro before I, you know, after I, you know, did just about everything, but uh, lots of, you know, lots of essentially me uh, planking. <laughs> Uh, no, not the kind where you go make yourself look stiff as a board, you know, over something, but actually putting the planks on this boat here. What fell? What, like, needle fell? Oh, I must have like a piece of dust or something. Oh, well. But, uh, in doing that, I've gone here and made this, uh, little hedgehog, I guess. Well, except for, like, googly eyes or something. Alright, I guess this is the part where I get to uh, planking then. Here we go. Alright, and before I get to all that planking, I had to do these pieces 14 from the last video. But while I'm cutting uh, that with the saw, stop it, Richard, we're blind. Um, anyways, yeah, I'd just like to thank my new subscribers. Now we're up to 28. Uh, also, most recent one was, I guess, Alex Navarro. Thank you very much. And if you didn't want that to be like publicly available, I think you may want to adjust your privacy settings. Anyways, I figured celebratory music was appropriate there. It'll change in a minute. But, uh, yeah, so there I go. I did some cutting. I tried to cut from three directions to get that piece 14 to the right curve. And I ended up kind of flutzing things and then trying to fix it and noticing I had a bit of a gouge left from the saw. Ah, here you go, Paco Bell's cannon. How appropriate since we're working with wood. So what I did is I made what I'm going to call chinking fluid. I guess we could call it caulking, too. Uh, where I mixed some sawdust with the wood glue and rubbed it into the uh, gouge that I'd left in that piece. And now what I'm doing is I'm uh, cutting from the uh, other piece 14, and this time I'm just going to sand it to the right curve as best I can, because, you know, with enough elbow grease and, a, you know, a low enough grit number, you can totally do it. Um, and so I get that curve going, and then I will end up gluing both of these into position. I have to say, this gluing jig has proven very handy, so I'm glad I got that. But, um, anyways, there you go, reading instructions. I'm trying to fit the, um, fit the deck in. Now, honestly, I think I should have tried fitting it in before. I think the instructions may have actually said something about, hey, use the deck, too, to make sure things are aligned. But, yeah, I'm a bit of a dunce, I guess, and didn't fully listen. Uh, I'll also make another mistake I'll point out probably when I'm starting the plank, but I put in this uh, deck, which is just a kind of a plate you'll put other planks on later, try to hold it together with the clamp, realized it wasn't going to work, so I put in some pins. And while these pins are the best for working with, in my opinion, they're a bit little bigger than the other ones, and they're kind of murder on the fingertips. I gripe a little later about wanting to get a hammer in this. You'll see it in one of the slow motion sections. I still haven't gotten that hammer yet. Uh, Alright, anyways, there I go, getting some bits of excess glue off with the, um, either with the uh, sculpting tool or the knife. Then I'd get work on that back bulkhead, sanding it in appropriately, fitting it in, you know, relative to the deck, everything else. You know, using the saw to do a little bit of extra shaping where the sandpaper just isn't quite gonna cut it. And then I proceed to kind of smooth things over, make sure all these uh, pieces kind of just blend in together with the bulkheads to try to be able to create that um, planking effect as best as I can. I don't think I'm doing too bad for my very first wooden model ship. Again, sorry about the uh, this not being Dreadnought, but uh, you know, close family friend really likes uh, model ships and could use the cheering up, uh, so I will do so. Speaking of, you know, the model ship, though, that little boat there that I just had for a moment ago, that little lifeboat, I actually lost that. I don't know where it went, so I'm going to build one out of wood because I just think it's going to be better detail and everything else, even though I'm you know, still learning. Anyways, I also try to get some of this flat mold flash off of these metal cast cannons. What I'm wondering, though, is do I really want to put my time and effort into that, or do I just want to, you know, 3D print some better ones because I have the technology to do so? I'm thinking that might be the best bet just because of, um, you know, save myself some time, some effort, and get some better details. But we'll see. We'll see. Here I go. Some more sanding, some more smoothing things out. And finally, I hope in a moment or two, for us, it was a bit of sanding for me, if I recall, and maybe some file work, too. Getting it all in, getting it together, making it all nice and tight fitting. Alrighty. 
And then, yeah, putting in a bit of the filling uh, stuff that I made before letting it dry and maybe sanding it out a little bit again. So, yeah, I might as well call it caulking. Chinking fluid might send the wrong message, even though that is the term for when you're doing it with a log cabin. That's what, what I first thought of. So, there I go, cutting out some of the uh, actual keel pieces now, which are of a different type of wood. And, yeah, I carve those out and then put them all together onto this uh, piece. I didn't see any instruction where to do it. And I learned that you don't want to do something in these instructions until it tells you to do something. But then it seemed to be indicating that they'd already assembled the keel as a whole individual piece rather than waiting and keeping it in separate pieces. It was an 11A, 11B, 11C kind of thing. Uh, but I do end up putting that on, gluing it on, you know, using this uh, a bit of file work and a bit of sanding to get everything to fit nice. But I get it, there it works. Yeah. By the way, by the way, a good thing about uh, having April vacation and having taken it off is I got to do a lot of this, uh, you know, for this video. So that's good. Things move pretty quickly, as you could, as the attentive of you would have noticed from the beginning of the video. Um, so there I go, cutting more pieces, putting them on, you know, getting all the way up to the back, making sure things are glued together, all that stuff. So, sanding away, and eventually, yep, there we go, lay down the glue and put it in, and I may give it a few strokes of the sandpaper as well, just to make it all reasonably smooth for everything else. I probably do do that. And here we go, the first piece of uh, wood. It tells you you should soak it, and that's what I did. And then I tried, like, the little things they provided didn't work, so I took out the big pins that I'd gotten and started doing it that way. Did a bit of sanding to make sure it fits, and, of course, then doing some bending. I get better at the bending and sanding as things progress, as well as the gluing, which is kind of important. So, the mistake I made, by the way, is uh, instead of having that go uh, upwards, it went downwards. So that might throw some things off later. That is the precise placement of that plank, or those two planks, that I've uh, flutzed a little bit. But live, learn, and fix it if I have to. All right, here's a, a normal speed section. All right, so I know I normally would do a slow motion bit on starting this, but uh, so I had the niece in the shop, and she was kind of talking to talk my ear off a bit so I know YouTube's a bit sensitive to kids showing up so kind of couldn't do that unfortunately oh dear it looks like these little splits that I've got in this will stay rather unfortunate now I'm gonna take have to take a look at these pins versus the ones that Kit provided and make a decision are they that much thinner? And they're even thinner, hmm. Well, okay, so that's a decision there, which not quite the one I'd have liked, but that's life. So what I'm gonna have to do is take those pins and probably get like a little nail thing or something to use with them. But, also looks like the glue has held quite nicely. Means I can use it, even if this is a little wet, which is good. All right, now for the next side, and then start this planking in earnest, eh? All right, and hopefully not be, not have too bad of a result at the end. Okay, figured I'd share that little bit with you. By the way, if, uh, you know, her hands or something have got in the shot, I'll have tried to have deleted any moments where that happened, but, uh, yeah, now you know who that is if, uh, you know, some, like, Aaron Tand or something gets in the shot, or if there's a bunch of this edited out, you now know why, because lots of, uh, because she showed up in a lot more shots than I suspected she did. Enough of that silliness, though. Let's go ahead and, uh, get to more planking, shall we? And quite possibly getting a new mini hammer or something. So, I do, uh, more planking in this section. Uh, you'll see I first try the, uh, little pins and, you know, just rig up using the pin vise to tap them in. And it doesn't seem to quite work out for me. It seems that the, uh, T-pins end up being a better choice for me. Both because I'm too lazy to go buy a hammer and because they're so much easier to pull out and work with, in my opinion. 
Uh, so I end up going back to them. They also seem to have better holding power or whatnot, and I do appreciate that. So there I go. I'm putting things on. I end up having to use that clamp to hold some of that uh, first plank in position. Then I lay some uh, glue in various places. Re, you know, redo some of the pins just because it's you know giving me trouble. And then I go ahead and look through some instructions as well as uh, sand down that uh, next bit. Start warping it to try to make it all nice and follow the curve of the boat. Everything else. And I ended up going uh, twice as many as are on the first side down. So I did an even one and they did two more. Uh, just thinking, you know, it held, it would have held the shape for the first one. And the first one kind of compensated so I could do a little more maybe. I'm not sure. I wasn't super consistent with that. But I got a little more consistent later. So there I am doing some gluing. Putting in everything using the uh, pins. And that's the big thing for this, and I ended up using, uh, you know, a uh, piece of what is sort of a rigged up paintbrush. I should probably get a paintbrush dedicated to this. Um, now, the third one's a little interesting because the instructions say you want to sand down the, uh, ta the kind of taper the ends of your planks to, you know, better follow the curve of the boat. So that's what I've sort of been doing, although I do it with a cut first and then kind of sand if I feel the need to. And the reason I'm doing that, you know, is also to even out that cut. And the reason I've do, been doing that is just to, you know, again, mat, try to match the taper of that boat as well as to um, kind of keep things from being impossible to work with. That was the big re reason I, you know, started doing the cuts the way I've been doing. I just, you know, if it's following the curve of the boat, but it's too, you know, too much of the other planks in the way, I go ahead and I've been cutting. So that's what I've been doing for that. And then, of course, just holding it all together with pins. So, you'll see I've been starting just by putting the glue on just the bulkheads of the boat and then putting it in the, um, putting the glue on the, uh, you know, edge of the uh, plank that's already on the boat. Later, I end up doing glue and uh, everything on the plank I'm putting on, just, you know, laying it on in beads. And that's a lot faster, which is good. So, there I go, laying everything on. Put, you know holding it down and you know using the pins to hold this thing in place while it uh, you know dries and then gets all good and strong so there we go and then a the last one and that's probably going to be it for this uh time lapse section where i'm going to go on and talk about some things okay so you see that red guy there i end up squishing and destroying him later but he was my first guide for this and this is the first plank i did with that uh, trick i just mentioned we're laying beads on the plank and put a uh, glue on the plank I'm putting on rather than on the model itself all right time for a normal speed section all right so before I do it can I get myself in the shot here too I actually is probably a little more I have my ultrasonic cleaners behind there there we go, that gets everything in the shot. So, what I'm trying to do is walk up in stages, you know, the thing, the instructions say to keep the uh, tension even from the drying and stuff. So, I did a couple, like one there, like one, two there, then went down to three, or I went down to three here, then I went to three more here, you know, evening, you know, pulling back, I'm going to do three more again to try to keep it even-ish. But yeah. So, uh, huh. you know, I really need to get a tiny hammer for these. I know they saw them, I'm just too lazy to get one. All right, well, back to planking. Yes, back to planking. And not the kind, again, as I said before, where you go stand stiff as a board over something, or rather, I guess, use your belly for it. So I'm using that red thing. That was just part of that uh, cell phone case that didn't quite work as well as that I liked. Um, it, it held everything, it would have done the job, and I'd found a way to actually get around that calling issue, but then the connectivity between the phone and the hub was in a bit wonky, I guess, because of the angle everything was held at, so I had to drop it, unfortunately. So, there we go, putting in more pieces of, uh, wood. This time I go way down on, uh, both sides, pretty much. Uh, or at least make them even, rather, I should say. So, yep, I'm marking off places so I know where to cut, do my cut. And then I'm still using that uh, thing with the, uh, put the glue on the model rather than the glue on the piece I'm adding to the model. So, 
I'll ev I eventually start getting it right in the neck in the either the next little bit or even during this uh, time lapse bit. So, but yep, there I am, adding lots and lots of uh, planks. Hmm. So, yeah, I know that this is different than the Dreadnought model, and I'm assuming is uh, bringing in more subscribers in this wooden one. So. Again, you know, this is for a, a close family friend who uh, likes model ships and uh, has had some bad news. So I'm hoping to kind of cheer him up with this a bit. Um, so there we go. And yeah. So anyways, you know, yep, cut that there. Use that red piece. Eventually I end up stepping on that piece and it breaks. But I'm actually impressed with well how well it held up. That makes me feel like I'll actually be able to do a little something on the next episode where I'm considering making a new way to hold the camera just to get some better camera angles. Uh, what do you guys think? Good idea, bad idea, crap idea? Um, feel free to mention it in the comments. That is what they are for. Um, if you're new, I also do this with a lot of um, other things. You know, I did add a lot in the other Dreadnought playlist where I made some things. Um, but anyways, yeah, there I go. Cutting, again, some pieces. Using now a piece of... Um, a piece of the square tube that I had as a uh, guide. And then getting upset because the camera dropped and throwing a bunch of curses and swears around. Uh, Alright, so there I go. Now I'm, uh, yep, just gluing things in. And this is the part where I realize that when I put the other side on, and I'll remark as such in the next part of the, um, next part of the, uh, this, uh not time lapsed, is, uh, this does look like a hedgehog. I don't end up adding googly eyes, unfortunately, but it, it, it looks like a hedgehog. I'm not sure if this is where I started using the bottles as a uh, mandrel, but this is where, as you can see, I've started being smart about that glue and just lay it on there and then, tell, you know, hold it all in with the uh, pins. All right, time for the um, slow motion section. <laughs> all right, so I had a little funny thought here. I've got all these pins in it. I should put like a little pair, of, I should put the next yeah, next set of planks put here, put a little set of googly eyes on it, and start petting it like it's a hedgehog. <laughs> the pandemic's almost over. The pandemic's almost over. <laughs> On a more serious note, I got my shot and you should do. Uh, it's until every, we've actually reached herd immunity, this is going to be... Just one of those dangerous things we have to worry about. Okay, that killed the mood. Let's bring it back by putting the other side of this thing on and maybe or maybe not putting some kind of eyes on it. Boink! And here we go. We add the other side and I just leave all the, you know... This glue takes a long time to dry compared to normal plastic glue that I've been using, which is like, done. So that is going to make this go slower than I'd have liked, but it's still going pretty good, all things considered. Um, yeah, so there we go, add bit by bit. And you'll see I'm starting to also have to taper the back side of this as well, going from the brow to the stern and having to taper both ends now, which is okay with me, you know, it happens. Um, just trying to do that, using that as sort of my guide for uh, how much I have to taper, how much I don't have to taper. You know... This thing also looks like a Chia Pet, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, it's a Hedgehog or it's a Chia Pet, but you'll see me pet it in a minute or two. Uh, yep, there I go. Once again, bend things over. I think you may have just seen me quickly use the uh, bottle as a mandrel. And you can see me doing the markings of where things are, you know, to try to follow the curve as best I can. I know, not the greatest thing to use a straight line to do it, but it works pretty well. And I'll be going over it with a second layer of planks anyway, so it's not like it's an insurmountable thing to, uh, you know, cover up the inevitable gaps that are going to occur, because this is my first time with a wooden model boat. Please tell me how you think I'm doing. That's what comments are for. All right, enjoy the outro. Hey, Sonic. Who's a good boy? This thing really does look like a hedgehog. <laughs> Uh, maybe I should paint it blue and really put googly eyes on it. <laughs> now, now, that's not how it looks in the box. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alright, so, 
that was a lot of planking, and uh, but um, other than that, uh, yeah. So I think we're coming along pretty nicely. Next time, I'll hopefully have this. Uh, well, either I'll have this planking done, or as I'm sure you've noticed, camera angles have been monotonous. So maybe next time I'll uh, have some way to fix that and maybe make that on camera. All right. Well, until next time. I am Rich, this is RMX Models, this has been Mamoli Lexington Part 2, and now time for the uh, traditional YouTube dance. Of like, share, subscribe, hooray! Alright, peace out for now.